Uh, good morning, guys. Uh, this is Mr. Varela. This is um, our first video lecture in the series of lectures for uh, Chapter 10. Uh, this is for Chapter 10, Section 1. Um, this is specifically, if you're in Mr. Varela's Life Science class, this is for 7th graders. It is period 2, 6, and 7. If you're in my 8th grade physical science class, you're at the wrong video. You're going to need 6.1. Okay, so uh, to get started, um, you have to make sure you have your Chapter 10 classwork packet. Um, this was passed out on Friday. It's also available to download on my website. If you were absent, I did mail out packets over the weekend. You should be getting it by this Wednesday. Now, um, before we begin, you should have already done the key terms uh, where you put the drawing right here with at least four colors and find the definition in the back of the book. Uh, if you don't have a book, you were warned that there is no online book. You were supposed to go to Miss Mary, the librarian, to get a book if you're missing your book. Okay. Uh, now, if you don't do this part, you can still do the notes that do not require a book, which is right here. This is what we're doing today. So it already says chapter 10, 1, the plant kingdom. This is the notes that are going to be in the PowerPoint. And then this is where you're going to put your questions or any extra information you'll learn. Remember, as always, a minimum of three items. And on the bottom, please give me a one sentence summary of what you learned. Please do not be vague and say, oh, I learned about plants. That's too vague. Specifically, what did you learn? Uh, today, we'll be covering one page. It's going to be front and back. And then here's another page and that one. So it'll be two pages front and back. I will upload chapter 10.2 later this week, but for now, just focus on chapter 10.1. The EQ is right here where it says, what characteristics do all plants share? Okay, first slide. Nearly all plants are autotrophs. Now this word autotroph is actually two Greek words put together. The first one, auto means self. So if you think of like an autobiography, um, it means a story you write about yourself and um, troph is roughly translated to one who is nourished so together autotroph means something that makes his own food now keyword here is nearly all plants not all of them uh, there are some plants that are parasites and they actually live off of a host now this does not include plants like the venus flytrap you know there's there's some plants that could eat insects but they're really eating the insect for other nourishment. You know, maybe there's not enough nitrogen in the ground or maybe they do need protein. So uh, pair, uh, plants like um, Venus flytraps that trap insects and eat them, they're only supplementing their diet. But to a certain extent, they could still make food out of sunlight. Um, the plants that are not autotrophs are plants that are flat out um, parasitic plants and they literally eat off a host. Okay, next slide. Now, uh, plants do have a body like animals, and um, as such, they're broken up into parts. For instance, um, plants have organ systems. Uh, the same way that you have a circulatory system and a respiratory system and a nervous system, um, plants do have systems, but they're pretty basic. They basically have um, only two major systems. They have the shoot system, which is anything above the ground, and they have then the root system. So they're not as complicated um, as animals. With you know, We have various systems. In fact, we have over a dozen, but still uh, it's broken up into a major body system. And if you look closer, organ systems are made up of organs. The leaf is an organ. So the same one that you have uh, for instance, uh, for the digestive system, you have your stomach, your large intestine, your small intestine, you have smaller organs making up the larger organ system. Well, um, leaves would be considered like an organ and all the leaves make up the entire leaf system or the shoot system. And if you look closer, organs are made up of tissues. So if you look at how there's layers of cells and they're grouped together, uh, they all have a specific job, but they are part of the large organ. And if you look even closer, the tissues are made up of cells. And the cells themselves have um, organelles. They have structure. They have um, chloroplasts. They have ribosomes. They have a nucleus. They have a ER and so on. So they're not much different than animal cells. But um, as we've already learned before, plant cells have some unique traits that animal cells don't. Like, for example, plants have cell walls. We'll get to more of that later. Adaptations for living on land. Uh, please be aware that the first living things, even before plants, 
The first living things were underwater. 75% of our earth is covered in water. So for hundreds of millions of years, all life from plant, animal, bacteria, fungus, all life was found underwater. And not only because water is needed for life, but you need to realize that in the very beginning of um, the earth's lifetime, land was very harsh. There wasn't very a, a lot of um, places where you could find shelter. Um, it was, the earth was being bombarded by UV radiation because we didn't really have an ozone layer. So it wasn't really safe to live on land. So for hundreds of millions of years, um, plants and other organisms lived underwater. Now, eventually, uh, plants did migrate and live on land. In fact, plants were living on land for hundreds of millions of years before animals actually evolved to live on land. But in order to make that transition from the ocean to the land, they needed to evolve five special traits to be able to survive on land. And here they are. The first one is how do they get water and nutrients on land? I mean, when you're underwater, you're obviously surrounded by water, but also there's a bunch of nutrients that are floating in the water. So in order for the plants to be able to live on land, they needed to find one way uh, to be able to get that food, uh, I'm sorry, the nutrients and water. And that's how they um, evolved the roots. The roots um, evolved as a way to anchor the plants into the ground, but also to try to get any nutrients from the ground and try to get any groundwater. Second was how do they save the water? You see, when you're outside and it's hot, you start sweating. Well, plants also sweat. Um, water gets um, evaporated from the leaves. So one thing that plants evolved is this thing called a cuticle. A cuticle is this waxy waterproof layer. You've probably seen that when rain collects on leaves, it forms like these little puddles because it's not being absorbed. In fact, if you ever look at the bottom of the leaf, you'll notice that the top of the leaf is probably darker green and shinier in light. But on the other side, it's a dull green. Well, the reason why is because this waxy layer doesn't absorb any water, but on the flip side, it also traps any water in the leaf. So whenever the sun is hitting the leaf all day, it prevents any water from here from evaporating. Therefore, plants can go a long time without um, getting that much water. It's a way to save the water. It prevents unnecessary evaporation. Okay, uh, how do you transport the materials? You see, the uh, plants have roots on the bottom, and then the roots is where they get the water and the nutrients. How do they get that water to the top of the plant? And then on the top of the plant is where you have the leaves, and the leaves turn sunlight into food. Well, how do you get that food to the bottom? You need a way to transport water and nutrients from the bottom to the top, and transport food that you make from the top to the bottom. And that's where we get what's called xylem and phloem. We're going to learn about xylem and phloem um, in the next chapter, but you can think of xylem and phloem as like veins and arteries, but not really. Remember, plants don't have a heart, so it's not really a vein or artery. And also when it comes to animals, um, veins and arteries, it depends on what's going on. An artery is a tube that carries blood away from the heart and a vein carries blood towards the heart. This one, there is no heart. Basically, uh, we'll learn later that um, phloem uh, carries a food. So the food's made from the leaf and the food travels down the phloem. And xylem is what carries the water and any nutrients it gets from the water. So plants had to evolve this, the xylem and the phloem, a transportation system to move stuff around. Um, uh, there's a lot of plants that still live underwater. They don't need this because of the fact that they're surrounded by nutrients, they're surrounded by water, and the entire plant is able to make um, food from sunlight. But plants that live um, on the ground, remember there's some parts of the plant like roots that are below ground, they're in the shade, they're ba literally buried in the dirt, so they can't make their food. And then, um, you know, the water is underground, so how do you get the water up? So that's a problem they had to overcome. All right, next one, support. You might be wondering why I put this picture, and I kind of explained it to some students already. Um, this is a police car that basically hit a tree going about 50 miles per hour sideways. Now, luckily, the police officer that was in it, um, the story is I, this police officer survived. He jumped out before he hit the tree, but he knew um, that hitting a tree is, if you're in the car, you're not going to survive it. Now, this car sideswiped a tree. Look at the damage made by the car. This is a ton of steel and glass literally bending around the tree. By the way, the tree st is still standing. And there have been plenty of accidents where cars have hit trees. I've heard in the news, cars hitting trees head on and the car splitting in half and the tree is still standing. And it doesn't have to be a 
ginormic tree. It, the tree might be like the diameter of a human. I mean, if this were to hit a human, there's no way the human could survive. Yet when the tr cars hit trees, these trees survive. It's almost like if they have superhuman strength. Now, what gives them their strength is the fact that they have cell walls. Animals don't have cell walls. Plants do. If you ever try to chop down a tree, you know firsthand that it is actually a very hard thing to do. Now, if you're thinking, well, oh, plants are lucky. They have cell walls. I wish I had a cell wall. Not really. Uh, one thing that cell walls do is, yeah, they give you this superhuman strength, but it limits your mobility. Trees aren't known for walking around. You know, maybe trees do move in the wind, but only so much. When it's very windy, the limbs of the tree could snap off. Now, animals don't have, animal cells don't have cell walls because we want our mobility. We want our flexibility. We want to be able to move. Um, However, plants adapted that because they didn't really care about moving. They really cared about trying to fight gravity. Remember, when they're underwater, gravity is less of an effect. But when you're on Earth, on the land, now you're feeling the effects of, of gravity. Plants don't have skeletons. They need some sort of support. Otherwise, they would uh, bend under the strength of gravity. The final adaptation they needed is reproduction. Now, they needed a way to spread their sex cells. Plants were the first ones to develop sexual reproduction way before animals. And they needed one way to, to spread their seeds because it's not like they could move. Uh, when they were underwater, if you could reproduce sexually, you could just let the water carry your sex cells. That way you could mix with other similar plants and reproduce. Um, when you see like a dandelion and you blow this, these are actually uh, seeds that you're, uh, that you're dis uh, distributing. But how do we get, uh, what about the flowers? Have you ever noticed that dandelions have flowers? Well, the flowers have the male and female part. And we're going to be learning about the different parts of the plant and how plants can basically reproduce with themselves or with other similar plants. Okay, now plants are classified into two major categories. Um, there, there's one group called vascular plants and others that are not vascular plants, the non-vascular plants. Now, um, vascular plants, what they are is this. If I go back in my slides, it's this thing right there. Uh, the xylem and the phloem is called vascular tissue. Therefore, plants that have vascular tissue are called vascular plants. So you're, if you're a plant, you're either in one of two categories. Those that have the tubes that carry the food and water and those that don't. Now, why do we, what do we learn? Why do we need um, these tubes? Well, you probably have to live on land and you needed a way to transport food and water. So vascular plants contain vascular tissue and they're better suited to live on land because they have those tubes that carry the food made in the leaves. The, the leaves have the chloroplast turning sunlight and water into sugar and that's food and you need tubes to carry the food down to the rest of the tree and the roots. And the water is, you know, underground. So you need roots to get the water, but now you need a tube to take the water back up to the plant. So you need that vascular tissue. Now, another thing about vascular plants, they have the ability to grow very tall. Not every vascular plant is this tall. Grass, for example, is a vascular plant, but you don't see grass this tall. It'd be kind of weird. You have to mow a lawn and you have grass that's like five stories tall. You'd never be able to finish that. But the tallest plants in the world are all vascular. So that's a dead giveaway. If you see a tall plant living on land, it's going to be vascular. Now, being vascular also allows you to live in any non-Arctic environment. That means like the North and South Pole, you won't find any plants. But you're going to find vascular plants in every part of the world. We're talking about jungles and rainforests, even the desert, because of the fact that they are really good at being able to attain water and nutrients in the harshest of environments. Now, the opposite of being vascular is not being vascular. Now, you will find non-vascular plants obviously underwater because they need to be surrounded by water. So if you look at um, any kind of plant, I was gonna say um, kelp or seaweed, but technically um, they're no longer classified as plants. But there are some plants that live underwater and they're off the bat non-vascular. But what about plants that are above the land that are non-vascular? Well. If you, this looks familiar, this is moss. Moss will grow on anything. Moss will grow on, yeah, it's growing on this dead tree. It could grow on dirt, but it could also grow on rocks. The thing is, notice that the moss is surrounded by this rushing creek. So that means that when the water